Yo, was that oh, uh, oh. was that super loud in your headphones? It was so loud in my headphones, louder than usual. Was it? Yeah, I guess it's the new setup that I have. For yeah, put, put the, oh, there it is. <laughs> so it is loud on your side too. Yeah, it was. <laughs> All right. What's up? Welcome to episode 74, Jump Street Podcast. We have a very, 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 very special guest on this how episode. Sp how special? <clears throat> Extremely. Very to the 10th hour. Extremely. <laughs> very to the 10th. I like but, that. Um, I like that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very excited. We've been talking about having this guy on for a very long time. He Very was one of our first supporters from like the OG crew and, mm -hmm. you know, backing up our episodes and, and showing love. And we mentioned huge... him on a lot of episodes too. So yeah. That time we have him on. And he's been a huge supporter of just like the blade scene in general for years, like his local blade scene globally. Um, just all the years he's put in from, from the, all the early videos on VG six is when I first saw him. Um, we can get in rapping on the bar. We can talk about that. We can get into all that, but. Very excited for our, uh, our special guest, Eric Garcia. I don't remember the first video I saw him in, I guess. Might have been the first, maybe VG6 too. Who knows? I think uh, that was me the first. I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that though. <laughs> yeah. Um, but before we get into that, just everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, got a few things we want to get into this week. It's been a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've been busy. But um, first, I guess I should do, should I do my thing? Do your spiel. I got okay. It. <clears throat> Please follow us on all of our platforms. Go to YouTube, give us a subscribe, hit the notification bell. So when these episodes come up, you get a notification. Um, we have an Instagram. Please follow us. Go to our Facebook, give us a like. Uh, we have iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. Give us a, a review if you are so, feel so inclined to do so. All these interactions really help. On YouTube, if you share our videos, if you comment, if you give us a like while you're watching us live, if you give us a like... Uh, Later on, all that stuff is uh, pretty good. How's my volume, by the way? I feel a little loud. <laughs> Someone just said five bucks for my mustache. You're good. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but yeah, so um, give, give us a, uh, a follow on all of those platforms, please. We also have a Patreon, and we've been working on some videos that we're going to begin to release next week that are exclusive content for our Patreons. Um, some, some very cool episodes that when we, when we drop those, we're going to release them out and do maybe a couple up front, but... Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing some, yeah. So if you feel so inclined, you can give us a dollar on our Patreon, $5, $10, $20,000, whatever you want. And a lot of these things are going to end up going back into, uh, you know, back to uh, when everything calms down again, wherever that may be, and us attending events and going on trips. And it'll be cool. Yeah, we, we had our, uh, our Q4 Jump Street meeting before this. <laughs> so we have a lot going on uh, in the next few months, or hopefully yeah. sooner actually. So everyone stay tuned for that. Um, for that Patreon content, we already started rolling out a, a soft rollout of pay, uh, exclusive content there. If anyone is already a Patreon supporter, you've seen it already. So you only need a dollar to support. So, you know, you don't got to break the bank or anything like that. Just get in there, um, be a part of the community and hopefully you enjoy what we have coming for you. Yeah. We got a ton of stuff. Coming. I'm really excited about it. Um, there's a couple of things I want to talk about, but first, do you want to do your spiel? What spiel? Hit bomb! <laughs> 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 we just got we just got mad New York with it right there. Yeah, <laughs> we got mad. the New Yorker came out on you. I like that though, Billy. That's there. I missed that. Um, <laughs> do you see the hit bomb on the screen? The thing? Yes, I do. Okay, so everyone check out hitbomb.com for 100% plant-based CBD rich bombs and oils. Um, this is good stuff right here. We have an OG guest right now. I highly recommend you should use this, Eric, when we, you come on the show. But everybody is good for um, all those joints, sore muscles, aches and pains. I know we get a lot of that skating. So this stuff works wonders for it. Um, if you are inclined to try it without you know, diving right in, they have free samples on their website also. If you use code JUMPSTREET at checkout, you will get 15% off your entire order if you want to get a full-on full, full -on, uh, package. So check them out. Hit bomb dot com boom sick um uh -huh. there was also something else i wanted to talk about um other than our our daily spiels um let's hear it i, I noticed that uh, we, we've been getting a lot of support from uh, south central blade club and a lot of just good feedback and i was looking into his page uh, to see what it was and i wanted to give him a shout out and kind of get the word out 
He's a, a non, he's doing a nonprofit free skate school. They do shirt and sal- shirt sales and from the shirt sales and donations, they use the money to feed the kids who join the class and provide them with equipment to learn how to skate and how to be safe while doing it. They also build ramps and uh, able to, they're getting this money to get new ramps for future parks. They have classes every Saturday. They're hundred percent free for the kids of South Central. Yeah, free classes every Saturday. Yeah, Damn, and uh, shirts can be purchased through their big cartel. The link is in the bio. It's at South Central Blade Club on Instagram. Um, I gotta get a link everything that to put in the description. Yeah, so I, you know, just um, these people that are being proactive into you know working with the kids directly and getting all these you know trying to keep the things in our culture alive. We gotta support these things. We gotta big up these people. So please check that out at South Central Blade Club to see, you know, what you could do. You got some extra skates lying around. You got some extra frames lying around, things like that. And um, actually, we're talking about getting something together in the future, too, for that. But uh, mm-hmm. the current moment, South Central Blade Club. Check that out. Yeah, that's awesome. Big shout out to South Central Blade Club. Uh, big ups, you know, supporting us in the last few episodes hugely. So definitely check out South Central Blade Club. Hugely. I love to hear that. Hugely. That's like very Trump. Hugely. <laughs> it's hugely. hugely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we have fucking big news. We have a big thing to announce right now. I'm super mm. hyped on this. I'm and very excited about this. This goes back to our last episode that we did with um, Megan Peterson with the, uh, the Bladies skate and all the Bladies involvement in skating right now. Um, we are ha- proud to announce we're doing a Bladies giveaway. Boom. Let me get the video pulling up here real quick. But we are doing a Bladies giveaway. We teamed up with USD Skates and Bladies to give away two pairs of USD Blady Aeon skates, which that's huge. Big shout out to uh, USD, USD to hook that up. That's huge. Um, we are going to do a similar contest that we did to our, um, 10 K giveaway. So anybody who entered that, you're pretty familiar with the format. Um, this is for the blady specifically only though. So what you're going to have to do to enter is, um, post a clip yourself, referencing one of your favorite bladies clips, specifically bladies clips, um, use hashtag bladies giveaway in your post, make sure to follow blade ladies, USD skates and jump street podcast tag a fellow blady in your caption and you have two weekends to get this done. So the deadline is November 2nd. So it is, what's today? Tuesday, Tuesday. So Tuesday, you have this weekend coming up and the next weekend to get your entries in. And we will going to, we're going to pick collectively between me, myself, Billy and Megan. We're going to pick um, one of our favorites to get a pair of skates. And we are also going to pick one completely at random. So skill level does not matter for this. Just be a part of it. Enter. You're going to win. You have a chance to win a free pair of Bladies A on skates. That's awesome. Yep. So just recreating a, a famous Blady trick, Blady. Um, yeah. Awesome. You nailed it. Yeah. And um, we're also going to be giving away. I, I don't think I mentioned with that. Um, each winner is going to also get a Bladies swag package and a Jump Street swag package. So you guys can get some shirts with that also, as well as the pair of USD skates. So all you Bladies out there. Let's get going. I want to see some entries. This is going to be awesome. Our last 10K giveaway, we had a really nice, diverse um, variety of entries. And I want to see the same thing, too. I'm happy to see the same thing, too, with the Bladies for this one. So everyone get going on this. Um, We're going to post about it, too, on Instagram afterwards also. uh, So you have all the info on that as well. So big shout out again, USD Skates, Bladies. Thank you so much for coming together with this. And we're super excited to, you know, have this giveaway. For sure. That's fun. Hell yeah. Where, yeah. the, where the bladies at in the chat? Any bladies in the chat? The bladies. <laughs> oh, shoot. Someone, I got to also shout out Death Squad Blading, Bay Area. Homie Noah hooks me up with this hat. Death Squad Blading? Death Squad Blading. Yeah, I like this hat. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said something about it in the chat, so shout out. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> uh, are we ready for our guest? Yeah. All right, cool. So without further ado, we'd like to introduce the man himself from the Bay, Mr. Eric Garcia, ESG. Yeah. What's blocker, up? Blocker, blocker. <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I thought you were just going to come in with that. You know, I was going to get a little crazier, but then I'm like, I don't want to blow out the, anybody's earlobe, you know, their, their eardrums. I, yeah, I wouldn't we, expect anything else from you. Well, you were there that one bitter cold. Remember when I got yeah. crazy? Yeah. That was, was a little earache afterwards. 
Yeah, I mean, I used to, I'm a drummer too, and I flew in helicopter for a few years. So my eardrums are destroyed regardless. But that one bitter cold, whatever year that was, that was one of my most favorite bitter cold moments ever, which is being with you and the whole JSF Bay Area crew screaming at the top of your lungs that whole time for everything. It was fucking awesome. But the reason why, and just be, I know we just go right into this real quick, but the reason why I went so crazy was because the night before when they had the AM contest or the, or the qualifiers, they had this dude had this big pizza slice sign, cardboard sign, right? So we wanted to borrow it because our boy Swan was doing his run. So we wanted to write JSF hella big on the back. And we did. And the next day, that dude was wearing using the same pizza slice. So we told him to turn it around. I was, remember, Matt Mickey told him to turn it around and just said, JSF all the way across it. So we just went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I remember that, too. I remember the pizza sign. Yep, yep. That's what's up. You guys, man. I'm, I'm trying to think, by the way, which, which, which one is this? The one with the bleachers? Yep, that was the one. Oh, yeah, that was the one. That was the most lit one, I think. For sure, for sure. The one with the uh, with the A frame. The first year they did that. Big yeah. A -frame. Oh yeah, first year. Man, those went off. Uh, that might yeah, have been. I'm doing good. Um, thanks for asking, Eric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining us on the show. I'm honored to be here on your guys's platform, and I'm actually pretty excited because I was just thinking about it last night. I was like, man, am I relevant in blading right now? Because <laughs> this is about to put me right back on top. <laughs> You're definitely well, not dude. relevant. You're always posting all these dope photos of the Bay Area. You know, we don't get that that much nowadays. I, I talk about this all the time, too, how um, it's not as common anymore to see good quality photos of skating anymore. Because I think the iPhone era just took over and everyone just does stuff on their iPhones. But you're one of the few ones out there that are actually taking professional quality photos still of skating. So I know me personally, I highly appreciate that. And I know, like, you just... You have heavy hitters Me in the too. area too, so it's just awesome to see that you're definitely relevant still. Thank you, man. Thank you. It's it's too e it's too easy to get these photos. I'm telling you, man. The talent's just ridiculous. Yeah, no, the the scene where you're at is just always had like such life in it, and I think that you've always been like there throughout the whole. I mean, I feel like since the beginning of the Bay Area, like you've seen it like come up from the, and you're still there. Yeah, um, yeah we we were just talking actually because. It's a bit cliche, but I like to, you know, I like to dig into the to the beginning first before we get started. And I we were talking like, oh, what was, you know, ESG's first video, VG6, like I first saw you in VG6 rapping on the bar. And uh, I'm curious, like, not only what was your first video, but what was your introduction to skating? Because, you you know, you've been around this Bay Area for as long as I can remember and still there to this day. So definitely. Uh, yeah. So first, first video I was ever in was definitely like, you know, major production and worldwide distribution with VG6. But the funny thing is, is I wasn't even skating in VG6. I was rapping on the bar train with my homeboys. Yeah. All right. And so long story short, when that video came out, uh, that like the week that it came out, one of my buddies, I used to live in Hayward, uh, California, which is like only like 20 minutes south of Oakland. And uh, my buddy gives me a call because we're getting ready to go to this skate contest in San Jose. And the first thing he says when he calls me and I pick up the phone is, dude, you're in VG6. And I'm like, what? What am I doing? What trick? And the first thing he goes is, you're rapping. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"What?" laughs> so I really, it didn't click in the, like, in the few seconds. But then as soon as I thought about it, I was like, oh my god that was the night that i went back home with eric burke and all the other guys that were on the train that day and we skated san francisco the day earlier and, and he filmed me rap and you know just flow with my homeboys <laughs> i'm so i'm so envious of that moment i know billy you had that as well that when you found out you were in the first vg like your your first appearance was in a vg because that's such a huge milestone and such an achievement in every skater's career and i'm so envious it's cool to hear your story about that too and i'm kind of familiar with fish's story about that also but i'm just that story just made me so envious of that particular specific moment. For sure. I mean, it, it totally is. It's one of those things that like, you know, you, it's like the milestone, you hit the milestone of your, or, or the, the plateau to go to the next level, you know what I mean? And push your skating yeah. that much more. Cause once you're in a VG, it's like, you do not want to not be in the next one. So you <laughs> whatever you want to do, and it's normally called VG courage and you just do yep. what you do to get, get your tricks in the video. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, but going back to how I started skating, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, just like everybody else, I saw skating on television, technically. Um, I this saw, is like, what, 96? No, this is back in, like, 93. 93, okay. So th 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 this is kind of what I wanted to get to. Like, I, I wanted to know, 
Because I know you got a history and yeah, okay. Definitely, definitely. What's funny is, is that um, when I heard Arlo come on the other month and he spoke about, you know, the previous generation, even before him, dude, I just completely like any OG ego I had inside of me just completely drained out. And I was like, yep, no, you ain't OG, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Because that was the OG generation. So I basically started, yeah, in 93. And I saw it. I saw aggressive skating on television. Um, it was actually, uh, I take that back. The first time I saw aggressive skating was in 94. And that was NIMS. The skating that I saw before that was uh, just skating on television, just rollerblading in general. And that's what got rollerblades on my feet. Um, it wasn't until maybe like a few months afterwards, one of my buddies that I used to go to school with, he also had blades and we would skate all the time we got into hockey at first. As soon as we put blades on, that was like one of the first things we wanted to do was play hockey. So we played hockey for about, you know, a few months, maybe six months at the most. Um, I actually skated with some hockey skates where I, where I was trying like aggressive stuff. I was jumping off stuff. And I remember my front wheel completely broke off. And then the frame piece where the bolt hole is actually snapped too. I didn't care. I kept skating them for like months because my no. didn't buy me skates. So I literally ended up shaving down the front of the of the frame where i was just rolling on three wheels you know what i mean the three back wheels. Oh, yeah dang. so i you know i'm a little ghetto kid from hayward i ain't gonna i ain't gonna be ashamed to admit that but that's pretty much what i did and then um it wasn't until like i said yeah 94 where i saw aggressive skating and it was actually with that same friend at his grandma's house and what we did was is we took his grandma they, they showed like a little trip tip 101 on how to grind a, a p-rail or how to grind curbs and they showed you to use use a candle you wax it up so this was all just like mm. mind blowing guys we instantly took her uh guadalupe candle broke the glass mm -hmm. oh yeah, the cla yeah. what do you call it Gu guadalupe candle well it was a guadalupe it was like the statue of guadalupe you know so it was the same it was the same candle basically the same uh, okay we, we call them the jesus candles okay for sure <laughs> we waxed up the curb in front of his house and i kid you not that's that's where it all began that's where it all began my first trick was a soul grind First trick. First trick. Didn't even go front side. You dang. Wait, 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 that was with the hockey skates? No. This is with his skates, actually. Oh, his skates. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he All had right. rollerblade. Uh, he had those rollerblade, uh, the three wheel ones. I want to say Zetra, maybe. Mm. Oh, the Zetras, man. That's a classic. They were three wheels. So I was grinding in that front channel, not the back channel, when, with the front foot. Oh, yeah. Channel 11s? It was either <laughs> Channel 11s or Channel 33. That's all you could do? Yep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> damn yeah and pretty much that's how it started guys i just you know from that point on um i played baseball too i was in minor league you know i was in little league at the time and i played baseball for a good six to seven years before that about yeah about six seven years before that um but something about blading man just like completely took over my head and uh, it took over all inhibition to do only that and nothing else and it also told me that i don't like listening to somebody else tell me how to do things in, in the sense of like coaching you or teaching you something. And that was like the biggest thing that I fell in love with is that it was self-taught, you know, you challenge yourself and uh, the success comes pretty much from yourself. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like I completely relate to that. Like the passion driven, self-taught, non-coached thing that I think a lot of us relate to in blading. Um, damn, that's a really cool intro story. <laughs> I'm, I can go on and on. I can go on and on. No, just, in, in the little details, but in a nutshell, that was it, man. Like I said, it just opened up Pandora's box. From that point on, it was just skate anything and everything and learn how to how to get better. And then somewhere out of it all, uh, JSF emerged. Yeah, well, that was years down the road. That was probably in like '98, around '98. Was uh, was that because of Battle My Crew? Because you guys needed a name specifically for Battle My Crew? Yeah. Wow. Dave Payne was talking with uh, Jared Majors and Jared Majors was one of the like heavy hitters out here at the time. And Damn he, like, right. He was so he was, good. Yeah. He was our, he was our video man also. He was our cameraman. So he made, he actually made all the local videos. You know, we were the ones that were motivated and, uh, and juiced to go out and skate because he was always filming. Um, and yeah, when the opportunity came for VG12, that was like the, that was, that was it. We were like, okay, we already have a crew. We just need to put a name to it, you know? And the funny thing is the name of the crew that we had before was Licasto. Like liquor store. Teenagers, <laughs> 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 man. <laughs> That's awesome. So how did JSF come up then? You know, teenagers. <laughs> so basically, just it, it's it's such a it's such a 
I don't even want to say dumb. It's just such a teenage, like younger mentality, a way of coming up with a name, just whatever comes up, you know, and, and mm-hmm. it was a three-way call between Jared Majors, Rob G and myself. And this is when we were, we had three-way calls on landline. Yes. Damn. I love this. <laughs> uh, back then I was like one of the main, like hubs of the communication of all the skate sessions and like, where's everyone that's going to skate on Saturday or on the weekend, you know, this and that. So people would hit me up a whole lot. We were on the phone and yeah, when Jared brought up the uh, whole idea to us, he, we started coming up with ideas and yeah, Juice Sucker Fools was the, was what we finalized. <laughs> that's, that's tight. That's a sick. I was so curious to how, how it came up. That's awesome to hear that it came from specifically doing my battle, my crew, because that yep. shows how much of an impact those videos had back then. And I don't want to spoil too much of it, but we're going to do a movie and I really soon with that video. So, <laughs> right. so we're going to, everyone's going to be able to peep that section too. Definitely. I love that it was a three-way call between um, Jared, <laughs> you, and Rob G. That's so cool. Definitely, man. Yeah, that's how we used to do it back then. You know. You yeah. Know, get a hold of somebody somehow, and then you tell them, meet me there at this time, and you better make sure you're there at that time. <laughs> before a text, before a cell phone, before back in the, man. Yeah, that, I, I, I was probably similar to you guys back then, too, because I remember meeting up with people, and we used to have, like, printouts of like the trains oh, in new york they had printouts of like the train schedules and bus schedules and stuff i'd be like all right we're gonna be on the 415 train the fifth car you better be there and if you weren't there you were screwed i'm all sure right. it was similar in the yeah. Definitely. yeah for <laughs> sure for sure i mean it, it, and then it wasn't until you know i was really like one of the very first ones to to get a car at 16 and then that just opened up pandora's box at that point it was just like oh i have a car i can get anywhere now Shh. Here goes all my money on gas. That's it. Here we go. Let's rip. <laughs> Man. W- was this around the time of like Friday night skate? Because. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Because though, man, like that was something of like legend back yeah. East. Cause we used to have like big old sessions in the East coast, like, you know, 30, 40 people, something like that, which is pretty big in New yeah. York. And then we'd see sessions of you guys over there. And it was like a hundred people, a ton of people that doesn't even look like, they skate or have anything to do with it. And just, it was like a crazy turn up on yeah. like Friday nights. Like, how did that start? Like, what was it like being a part of that whole thing? Like, what that was just, just was a vibe. Can we get into that for a little bit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, I've talked about this in the past with people and it's really hard to generalize it and talk about it. It really comes down to, you had to be there to experience the mm. magic, you know? And I know that's pretty, pretty, vague to say but it's cold I explain to you guys it's it was just one of those things that you had to be there it, it was it was a time in, in at least aggressive blading where everyone was progressing like the next week someone was doing something mm. twice as better as what they were doing the, the week before that had and never been done or something something never, like that like never been done every week basically yeah you know? and uh and it was it was definitely a it was camaraderie that made me fall in love that much more with skating because I also like gained friendships tremendously over the course of a couple of years just from going to Friday night skate. And if it wasn't for that, I really don't think I would even have like the network of friends that I have today because that's what truly the ones that skated that. And I, of course some quit or, you know, gone off to do other things, but yeah. the ones that really truly, um, were able to experience that and still skate today they they kind of keep that love with them into the present and on how they skate because they know they went through something that we don't do anymore it just doesn't happen even when we try to get a big session together it's just not the same of what it was and, you know it's of course age has to do with it too we're a lot older now and you know just how you think about things um, back then it was just free spirit completely you know just going out exploring everywhere i mean this is san francisco california it's like yeah. one of the biggest metropolitan cities in, in the United States. And uh, being 15, 16 years old at, at the time, actually I started going there when I was like 14 um, in 96. And basically that was, it was just eye opening. You know, you, you gain so much experience in life. You get to learn a whole bunch of things. You see reality in front of you, you see good, bad things. So yeah, man, it was, it was a pretty crazy time. Um, and on top of that, you're right. It was, a ton of people that came out every week now the cool thing is is that there were two friday night sessions um there was the original friday night skate which started i believe in like the late 80s is a friday night session that where these rec skaters more fitness type skaters meet up 
and there's this one leader this one lady that just pushes a stroller around with a huge boom box in there a huge speaker and they just slap music the whole time for the whole night they started at like nine o'clock at night and they skate for like a good 20 plus miles i want to say all through the city so that was going on at that time um of course um arlo actually tapped on this too when he was on the, on the podcast you know aggressive skating was trying to make its its uh it's differences from that type of look from that type of skating. So I don't know exactly how Friday night skating, the aggressive side started, but all I knew is I heard about it through Jared majors. And the way I heard about it was, is in 96, when Miss was in San Francisco, that was actually one of my first times ever going to San Francisco. And uh, when I went there, I skated uh, Hubba's hideout. And oh, Jared the classic here. man. I am so bummed. I never got to skate that. Yeah. Same here. <sighs> Yeah, that's another <laughs> that's another classic spot for sure. Yeah, a legendary spot. But uh, Jared Majors, um, I met him the first time, and he basically was like, "Hey, man, uh, you ever come out to Friday night, Friday night skate? Why don't you come out Friday instead?" That's all I needed to hear. Next Friday, I came out, and that was it, man. Game over. It's every Friday night from that point on. Yeah, that was a uh, something of epicness. Just like the energy that you could see, like looking in on that. That was like nothing like that of that time. And we had like a, a small idea of what that was like in New York, like just that, just yeah. that vibe, but man, the levels were so high, just the crew back then, all you guys was like, you got like, you know, you, Vinny, Kwangdo, um, like just Pat mm -hmm. and all these guys, like she, they just went on and on and on such a crew like, um, but yeah, man, just like, yeah, it was, it, it seemed just like an incredible time. And like you said, for like the growth, of that just like um, every week there was something brand new coming out or something like that. So yeah, yeah it's cool. it was definitely important. It was, it was one of the most important things to happen out here so that it kept the scene as strong as it is today. I don't think if that happened, the scene would be as strong as it is today. Strong foundation. Foundation. Yeah. You need to have a strong foundation, man. That's one thing I've always kind of stood behind, you know, it's like a representation and, and a foundation is going to keep the longevity going and you motivated basically. <laughs> is there, is there like a modern day version of that now of any kind in the Bay of a Friday night skate? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh I yeah. Mean, you, you do like a Tuesday, a th Tuesday or Thursday. Don't you guys have some night, night session, weekly sessions like that. Yeah. Uh, since I haven't been skating personally myself much for, you know, for a while, um, I don't really attend those sessions as much. Uh, if not really, um, but there are definitely guys out here in the Bay Area doing it. There's, and that's what's really cool is that now there's more people that skate out here that didn't live here before, especially during the Friday night times. They don't have any idea about that. And they're just bringing their own sauce out here and trying to do things. And it's working because the community out here is huge, man. It's so big. It's bigger than I expected. And when I really kind of realized that is when I started you know, kind of trolling more on, on Instagram and, and looking at other people's pages and seeing what was going on. Um, there's like a guy out here, his name's uh, Logan, uh, Ginger, Ginger Man, Ginger Shred Man, I think his name is, I, <laughs> is. But he's like a roller skater. He's like a hybrid. He's a roller skater, inline skater. And um, he has like the roller skate community on lock, man. He, he knows so many people. And just to have everybody come together and just have different things going on every single week is amazing on top of that dudes like mike jimenez uh he he puts together a lot of events too and just like sessions and whatnot uh, aren't those that the thing that goes down in the summer too there's like something in oakland that's that's like what is it like summer like friday night things well, we, had the, we had the first fridays and that first was fridays <laughs> yeah unfortunately it got it got uh cut off like midway through last year i think there was something to do with um I don't want to say the liability, but something was going on and they basically cut off our ability to do those every Friday, every, you know, every first Friday. But the first whatever four or five that we did were amazing. They were just, just this is the kind of stuff that we that I want to see people that don't skate see for the first time. I've, I've it been looks amazing. Here. People like from the outside looking in, people are jumping over yeah, couches cars, and cars yeah. and it just looks like a great time. And that's that's kind of what you want to see when you're seeing people skate for like, um, or seeing blading for the first time, just people having fun, really. 
definitely. I mean, I've been around, you know, I've been around tree skating for so long now too. And I've always seen people come up and watch us skate and, and compliment or just comment on our skating. But I don't think you get that much of an impact that way than you do when you see crowds around yeah. you because you know something's going on. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. People feed off that, the excitement of the crowd cheering and all that stuff. And it makes it, if, if that's someone's first impression, like you said, that is a much bigger impact, you know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's a prime opportunity for someone to have uh, a couple pair of skates for people to try on too. Definitely. Yeah. So it started out basically with um, uh, one of our buddies, Rob, um, Rob Ferguson. He, he runs and operates a place called Rob Skate Academy. It's a skateboard academy, but he also um, has like inline uh, session teachings as well. And Be Free was doing that uh, until he moved uh, away. But basically he hooked it all up and he's a huge uh He's a huge staple out here in, in Northern California in the skateboard scene and just in the whole general teaching world because he has, he just teaches tons of kids how to skateboard. You know what I mean? So he just has all those networking with First Fridays with other places to do events like this. So we're, we're pretty much waiting. Hopefully something comes up soon so we can do this again. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, that's really dope, man. Like just like again, like from back in the day till now, this the energy and the ever-changing evolution in like the Bay Area scene and just the the vibrancy and the life has been it's been cool to see and like yeah for you always being a part of it um so yeah then we get into like all these like companies like after that like you know there's Dyna there's Runners Project um you know and then there was all these other companies like uh that were coming out of the Bay that I, that you know you I don't think uh, I don't think you were part of Able if I'm not mistaken but all these other things that was a really exciting time, like working with Julio and like all those IMYTAs and everything coming up. Well, what, what was what was that time like? And because that seemed like, uh, you know, you were really starting to establish yourself as like, oh, boom, this is like, this is that guy from the, the area, like the pro from that area and just like, you know, became like a, a global name at that point. What was that time like? Yeah, it was it was uh, it was that it was hitting that next plateau. So just like I said earlier about the VG thing and like uh, getting into a VG, you hit that plateau. So it's like, all right, game on now. My life has started in blading. It's, it was the same exact feeling I got when John Julio and Ezekiel Anderson hit me up and said, Hey, Eric, you want a job? <laughs> and I was like, doing what? And they're like, you want to do sales for us uh, for this new role company that, that Ezekiel and I are starting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah what the hell so what i did is i was living in stockton at the time which is about an hour away from the bay area uh i home of the diaz brothers stockton california home uh, of the diaz brothers yeah. stockton california <laughs> nate and nick <laughs> <laughs> so i i i guess in the nice way to put it i left my girlfriend and i moved to back back home to work uh at a role playing company and that's <laughs> where we started paradigm distribution so paradigm, uh, paradigm. Distribution had three different brands under it. It had four technically. It was Synergy Bearings, and that's what we started out with at first. Uh, Runner's Project, Backpacks, and Dyna Wheels. And the fourth one was 7XL, but then 7XL turned into Able later on. Mm -hmm. mm. I forgot about that. That's right, 7XL. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. 7XL was Ezekwe's, the name of the, fir of, the, of the frame company before um, he left where I'm working currently, since I've been, wor I've been working at the same place for 20 years. Uh, he he left and started his own thing, which was Empire Distribution. And that's when he started, he changed the name to Able instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but, you, you only did uh, sales for that for, I guess, Paradigm? Yeah, that was my initial reasoning for getting brought in was to do sales. So just basically, yeah, cold call, do whatever I needed to do, get that shop list from whoever I can get it from and start calling away and trying to sell Rollday product. Did you have anything to do with like design or products? Uh, I don't know what you would call like yeah, yeah. For I feel like Runners Project, that'd be like an interesting one because they mostly made backpacks, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, it was a backpack company. Yeah, it was yeah. Like, it was just a yeah for backpacks. It was one of those new kind of I don't want to say cutting edge because it's just backpacks, but it's it was one of those at least cutting edge companies in blading that did, that did something. For sure. I mean, Senate was doing backpacks at the time too, but it, it was, Senate was obviously not known as just a, a backpack company so right that's that's something that doesn't exist now right if i'm not mistaken there's no like really backpack companies or skate bags i haven't seen one since like maybe mind game i'm sure rollerblade makes some but i got a really be... my, i got a really good backpack it's my trunk yeah <laughs> i guess maybe that's what it is a lot of us are growing up now everyone has cars and just uses the trunk i think it is man i still, <laughs> yeah, I, I, not... I still use my aim bags 
Yeah. Nice. I still I still have like two or three of them and I, I put that in the trunk. I double wrap my skates. So I put the bag in the trunk and I still walk out with that. But that would be cool did to see probably, some backpack companies now. Because you probably got smelly skates, man. My skates so <laughs> smelliest skates, the smelliest of skates. So well, that doesn't even doesn't even work sometimes. Pro tip. Put a just all you gotta do is hang <laughs> air freshener in your trunk. That's it. I have um yeah, I have charcoal deodorizer bags that I put all everywhere. I have them all in my trunk. I put them in my skates. I, I do whatever I can. I, I don't have like, um, I don't have the, I live in an apartment, so I don't have like a yard or like a stoop to like put my skates out on without getting stolen. So if I would, I would air them out properly, but yeah, the deodorizers are definitely helping on that. Definitely. They, they should get, they can make a skate bag with deodorizers built in it. There you go. Who's got Whoever's that out there. You better get on it. Who's got that. Who's got the, the R and D for that. And budget. <laughs> Someone will develop it. Hopefully. Um, so you're known as like this Cess slide guy. First of all, your dynasection was incredible. Um, you're known for like all these like big Cess slides and like big, you know, kind grinds that are very uh, specific and signature. But I kind of want to talk about the one of your most famous tricks, the the over the bridge and like the idea that came from that. I know you've talked about it before, but for those who haven't heard, I kind of want to get into that because these are like the kind of ideas that I like seeing with blading that you don't see as often. You kind of get straight sections a lot, but I like seeing these like, hot, like high production tricks and good ideas. And yeah, like what gave you the idea to like, to do that? And first of all, it was just insanely gnarly going from car to Brandon's thing. It was, that was yeah. just, yeah. Wh wh what was that about? Hold on, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it definitely was a production. That's for damn sure. Uh, it was a production that was probably a good year into the making um, only because wow. I wanted to be ready. Um, and I definitely took time to make sure that I planned it to be as safe as possible, as contradicting as that sounds. But uh, it's just one of those things, man, that once I started, like, I'm 39 years old right now. So what is it? Uh, it was in 2000 and 13 I did that so that was seven years ago so I was 32 at 32 I was for sure on my way out mentally being motivated to do any other type of skating like jumping on handrails and jumping gaps and all that kind of stuff it's just it just wasn't doing it for me so like any skater you need that adrenaline rush right um, and sketching has always been that sketching has always been something that just makes me feel like I'm alive. You know what I mean? Like, I know I could die, but all you got to do is hold on. So you don't die. <laughs> you wanted the rush of a hammer without actually having to do like a hammer. <laughs> kind of. What I used to do even before that is when I stopped jumping gaps, you know, like from, from high to low impact gaps, set to stairs, whatever you want to call it. I started jumping up gaps, like setting up wood and jumping up things. Yeah, I was going to talk about that, that too. That was so Literally, awesome. It gave, me, it gave me the same feeling. I was like, dude, I'm jumping huge stuff. My body's flying. I'm flying, yeah. But at least I'm not impacting like I used to. And I'm, yeah. And if you've ever launched up something like really big and you land, it's one of the most smoothest, like you're landing on cloud <laughs> feeling, but you know you just did something pretty big. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, so it's, it has all of the all of the stuff to get my adrenaline going. So that's why, you know, even started doing that. So anyways, back to the sketching, that's exactly why I started sketching more because I was just like, you know, I, I, I want to keep skating, man, you know? And yeah, as, as, as weak as it sounds, I'm over the, the, the rails, I'm over the, the gaps and all that. So yeah, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound weak at all. And like, and like <laughs> getting, and getting back to what you were saying about people seeing skating and like that initial attraction, I think like sketching, one, it's always going to be one of those things that's just gnarly. It's just always going to be that. And like people seeing that, it's always like, whoa. So there's, and yeah, it's just like, it's just like one of those things that's, that's always going to be gnarly. So I, I don't think that that's in any way, I just think that's a natural transition because there's only so long you can, you can do that. And it's cool to explore those other areas. So yeah, I think that's a really cool natural transition, but go on. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I did. I started, I started stitching. I was stitching stuff before, uh, you know, here and there when I wanted to. I mean, if there is a, there is a, a clip of me in VG12 in Battle My Crew where I, where I like look at the camera and I'm like, "Juke, suck a fools," and I'm getting <laughs> stitched actually to this one loading dock launch. You know, so mm -hmm. I was doing it back then. I just love the feeling of holding onto a car and going fast. But what I never really did was I never really took it to that next level and 
get something like on a freeway or somewhere where it just looked epic, I guess. Gnarly, yeah. It just looked really gnarly. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that likes to do his research. And I started looking around on the internet, started YouTubing videos and seeing how people skitch and just seeing what was out there. And I pretty much had my ego take over and I'm like, oh, no, nope, I can do it a lot better. So that's when the wheel started turning in the head and I'm just trying to think and trying to produce something that would come off, like you said, as gnarly as um, something that took some thought into it. That's not just your, you know, run of the mill, just hold on to the car and you're getting pulled. You know, the funny story is, is that I forget what video was. I want to say it's like a I think it was MDR, Making Dreams Reality, back in the mid '90s. Mm -hmm. There is a clip of one of the dudes from San Diego or Southern California, and he's skitching on the free, or he's skating. He's skating on the freeway. Not skitching. He's just skating on the side of the freeway. And I remember seeing something like that back then, and I'm like, insane. That's crazy to do. You know what I mean? So when I was thinking of what I should do to skitch on a car, I mean, this is everything that's in my mind. It's like, how can I? keep stepping it up and making it that much crazier, but so where I, you know, can actually handle it and do it. Um, so yeah, for Volo 5 specifically, um, like I said, it took about a year in planning. Um, actual testing only took one day, not less than a day. <laughs> testing. Uh, <laughs> Is there actual testing? I mean, we just, the one thing I wanted to test before I tried it was I wanted to make sure that I was able to transfer from the car to the motorcycle. Uh, at, yes, at I would school. imagine so. <laughs> that would, yeah. I wanted to make sure. Yeah. yeah if i didn't if i didn't if i wasn't comfortable with that who would have known maybe i maybe i wouldn't have done it but uh we went to the oakland oakland ports where there's like huge open roads out there you can people actually drag race out there and whatnot mm -hmm. so that's where we went and tested it the day before and or the couple days before and everything worked out man um i think i topped out on his motorcycle just to see how fast i can go on his with at about 70 miles an hour. Oh my Damn. God. I started feeling like a little bit of speed wobble. And I was like, did you have oh, glasses on by any chance? So no, man, it's, so, it, it's kind of crazy. What? I think about a lot of things in hindsight now and I'm just like, <laughs> wow, I can't believe I'm intact, dude. I can't believe I'm still seeing, you know, cause I, I yeah, like a rock could fly in my face. A, yeah. Uh, just the wind alone, just like crying yeah. from the wind, you know? What, yeah. what, what I thought was super crazy about it was obviously the transfer, but jumping like the metal slates in the bridge themselves and you handled that nice but like even the timing on the transfer and not having the transfer during those metal slates coming up like that changed everything i think definitely what happened too was is um if you watch that video if you watch volo five and you see right at the beginning of the clip I, when i start to get out of the car what happens is is uh my buddy that's driving he tells me he goes Eric, the metal grate's coming up. <laughs> all this freaking planning, man, all this planning. And I got out pretty much almost at the wrong time. As soon as I got out, I, I mean, I see the metal grate right in front of me as soon as he says that. So it, it rushes me to get out of the car. So I get out faster than I normally do. And as soon as I get out and close the door, I have to jump. Wow. So, uh, yeah. It was I did notice that. But it also just made the, the clip look that much, you know, intense, that much more intense. Oh Yo, my God. The risk factor on that is insane. I wish there was like other cameras of people's reactions in the cars. Like <laughs> it was a reality show when you could see their faces. Cause I'm sure to see that is fucking insane. No one ever sees that, you know? Definitely. Definitely. And, and, and to, to go back to another time that I sketched now that you said other people watching in, you know, what they must be thinking. I had an, I did an edit before I did the Volo 5 clip. Um, I, did a little, I did a little like two to three minute sketching in it. It's called ESG Sketching the Bay on YouTube, if you guys want to check that out. Like I've seen that. And there's a, there's a clip of me uh, sketching next to the big rig. When I got off of the big rig, I mean, not off the big rig, not sketching a big rig. What am I saying? I'm sketching next to the big rig. When we got off the freeway to go review the, the footage, a car pulls up next to us and he goes, that was fucking crazy. I got it on, I got it on my phone. You want to watch it? <laughs> and I'm, we're all just laughing like, no, my buddy got it on his, on his, on his camera. We're good, but thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'm like glad you enjoyed it. So that was like one reaction. And then back to the Volo 5 sketch, that took me two times. Actually, we tried it twice. We, oh. we failed on the filming the first time. Oh, I had to do that twice. We had to do it twice. <laughs> what happened? Yvonne fucked up. No, Yvonne didn't mess up. It was more of the car issue, which is making sure the car was cars were in the right spot. We came out with uh, let's see, one Mikey P was there driving his car. Oh, shit. My car. Uh, we had 
Raymar's van. I think it was like four cars total. So a damn crew. So it's the first time. So the first attempt, once I was off the bridge and we, we, we kind of take this with loop and we get to the stop sign to pull over. I'm the, fr- the front car. I mean, I'm in, I'm in front on, on Brandon's bike. The first car that comes up that isn't our car, just a random stranger, he pulled, rolled his window down. The first thing he says is, that was fucking awesome. And we're like, yeah. Dude, no joke. The next car that pulls up, another stranger, is this lady, rolls her window down. That was fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> So the complete the opposites. Opposite reactions, man. So yeah, yeah. So I can only imagine what people are thinking when they see me. Okay. Yeah. That was also 2013, you said, right? Yeah. So it was like so, right on the cusp of video phones, like really starting to come out. I was about to say, if that was nowadays, you'd be all over Snapchat, uh, Instagram. What's the other one called? TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, TikTok. You would be, you'd be famous. You'd be world famous. You should do it again. Again. <laughs> you should do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's awesome. Uh, real quick before... We jump off that topic. I'm curious about how it feels on your feet because I've sketched like maybe 30, 40 and, and it really hurts your feet. Did you have any additional footbeds, any crazy soft wheel setup, nothing like that? No, no. So the Bay Bridge is pretty, pretty terrible road. It has like these, these slits Lines. down the road. Yep. And my dumbass didn't even think about doing anything where I needed to make sure. I mean, I thought about it, but it didn't obviously sink in my head enough to want to change any wheels out. I rode flat 56 millimeter eulogies. <laughs> <laughs> wow. worn, worn wheels. They weren't brand new. They were worn. So that's risky. So again, everything in hindsight, I think about it and I go, oh man, thank God nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. If you were to do that now, I'd be like, all right, I'm riding 110s, like 80A, like super soft. Yeah. And like, okay. So to answer your question, it was rough. Definitely doing the the bridge sketch. It was definitely Mm -hmm. rough. Um, But you kind of don't think about that. You know, you're so, you're so, you're so juiced. Basically, you just want to get the clip and you're not thinking about that at the time. Mm -hmm. But I have sketched with like 80 millimeter wheels on and it's just like, you're on clouds. You don't feel anything. You can Yeah, I would imagine. I'm going to test it out one day where I want to just sketch for as long as I can go until the bearings or wheels just blow out just to see how long I can go. Is that oh, like, I love that. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to ask how you're going to top that. Is that what you're going to do? You're just going to start in like the Bay, take the highway East and just see where you're just on bearings. I mean, for, for, for personal uh, challenge, <laughs> that's what I want to do for sure. Or I can get like crazy with it and I can just start putting all these wheel and bearing companies on blast and see which ones, you know, go out first and which yeah. ones last longer. I, I like that. I okay, like here, that too. He, he, here's what I'm thinking. PCH down by Monterey, the windy road. There's a above camera drone shot. You sketch in on either a motorcycle or something, just like ripping through there. And there's like the whole above scenic. Like I want to see more sketching stuff, man. That's cool. Like I want to see an entire sketching part and all kind of things. Like I, I got actually even the sketching thing. Like, did you see the latest thing of uh of like Streets of Lagos? Yes. Yeah, like the way they were sketching, like they're sketching backwards and stuff like that. I was like, man, that's so cool. Like that's, so I don't know. That, so I, I think that that's a whole area that hasn't been explored too deeply. And yeah. that's something that's super, super cool. So I think that's uh, something that should. So, so now you got my ego turning a little bit, Bill. Yeah. You, you got to turn a little bit. So yeah, I said this about 15 years ago. Okay. And whoever I said it to, I definitely said, and I said it to probably multiple people. You brought it up earlier. You know, I, I used, I, I, I've, I've been known for doing a lot of set slides. Back then, when I was doing set slides, not pretty much nobody was doing set slides. I mean, they were doing it, but it was very, very just sporadically. And I used to say, man, how come people don't do set slides? Like grind out, of, grind and set slide out, or like quarter pipes. You know, you grind the coping and set slide down the, the, the quarter pipe. And what happened? Like five, six years later everyone started doing it it seems mm-hmm. like you started seeing more and more of it you know so i kind of feel like stitching is going to be that next thing 100 percent, and that's actually true like now that you bring it up i remember you like coming down and set sliding out of grinds out of the quarter pipe mm-hmm. and things like that so yeah, yeah that did be- that did become a thing that people started getting yeah. deeper into years later and even more so recently like people are you know set sliding out of everything so yeah. wow Easily the past 10 years, I've seen the set slide um, capabilities just like increase tremendously. Like people doing set slides now is exactly what I wanted to see like 15 years ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
I, I, I want to uh, my 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 brains gears and were spinning too when we were talking about this a second ago. Um, I would love to see a ESG VOD right where Conan O'Brien did this actually when he transferred from NBC to TBS because he moved from New York to LA. So he did like a promo video where he drove or like walked from New York to LA and did all these things along the way. Oh, it's so, so awesome sick. to do a cross country sketching video where oh you're just sketching on different things in different States, like go from the big apple to like the middle of nowhere in the country, stop by like Chicago and end up in like the salt flats and then end up in like the Bay area. And that was such be, a sick edit ah. for like one week. And that would be the illest video ever. And people will pay big money for that shit. And these are the kind of videos that are just so fun. Yeah, yeah like exactly. More sketching, more sketching stuff. I'm, I'm a huge supporter. I want to see more of that. But, oh, yeah. but I do got to throw a slight disclaimer out there because I'm not the type of sketcher. And this is, I think all the, all the East coast, New York heads are going to be like, Oh man, Eric, why'd you say that? But I don't like to hold on to strangers cars. Oh man, why'd you that's, say that? That's no, that's <laughs> fair. That's <laughs> fair. Uh, it's one of those things that okay, I I take that back on flat land, like not hills. I, I'll do it. I'll be more prone to do it. But going up a hill or downhill or something where I don't have that control afterwards, if they were, if I were to have to let go, mm. uh, it's just the trust factor is not there, man. I you never know what could happen. That's well, true. That, that, that that's where the uh the vod money comes in so you gotta rent a different car in all these different cities and make it look like you just grabbed on a different thing some of that hollywood movie magic you know <laughs> just hire a professional driver with the uh, wigs <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. oh shoot eric th- someone i'm um, in the chat this is a really good idea eric cohen said he said get dog face to sketch you with the ocean spray truck wow <laughs> <laughs> oh nice you know what i mean yeah i like that <laughs> <laughs> i've been watching dog face too man see i i i've been trolling i've been trolling instagram pretty hard the last this whole covid season i should say and dog face has been one of them <laughs> yeah dog face is tight <laughs> that video hit hard yeah <laughs> um man yeah that's that's cool man because i was always wondering about curious about the backstory with that um yeah me too i i didn't know like until like we talked about your staying along like and you started shooting photos i was curious like one how you started shooting photos and two the deeper question um like what gives you the inspiration to continue to stay around the scene and to continue to to push because i think it's a a huge motivator and you're kind of and you're certainly seen as like a a godfather figure in the bay and just holding like that that kind of family together the filthy fiestas and all these things like so um yeah curious like uh where that comes yeah, from. Yeah. So I, I've definitely touched on this in, in other, you know, interviews and podcasts in the past. Um, in 2013, I got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease uh, that where my immune system is attacking my joints. And what that's causing is inflammation. With that inflammation comes a lot of pain. With that pain comes a lot of non, no skating, basically. Um, so I didn't know this. Yeah, so it was kind of crazy because the first signs of feeling joint pain was actually when I was in New York for uh, your contest, Fish. Um, and that was in September, I want to say, of 13. Mm-hmm. And the day, the, day bef- the day that we had to actually fly out, uh, we, were, we were staying at an Airbnb in, in, where were we? I forget where we were. Damn. Was it the Rampage trip? That was a Rampage trip. <laughs> yeah. For sure. We rode bikes, I remember that night. We rode uh, city bikes. Mm-hmm. And the next morning when I woke up, my left knee was locked. Like it could not bend, it couldn't move at all. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Months before that, I would have sporadic joint pain in like my shoulder and my wrist and my, my ankle, my toe, my toes, my fingers, you know, just random, very random. And I'm writing all of this off as just, you know, oh shit, this is what happens when you skate for this long and you just, abuse your body left and right Mm -hmm. it wasn't until november 2013 um it was actually casey bagazzi's wedding that i had to miss because i got really sick i got like the flu and after i kind of got better about two weeks after that like right before thanksgiving my whole body just got hit and i'm talking about every single joint in my body was inflammated I, i could barely move could barely walk around without having tremendous pain so 
I am the kind of person that I really don't go to the doctors unless I can't fix myself. <laughs> and I couldn't fix myself. So I went and that was, um, it took about two weeks of testing. They did blood, blood, blood work and whatnot. And that was a diagnosis in December was uh, I had rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so with that said, they put me on medication for, for about, I, I was, I've been on medication up until last year. I made a personal decision not to take the medication because I want to see what my body does without it. Uh, there might be some people that know really uh, that are watching or going to be watching this. They're going to know about this and might say that's the dumbest thing to do. But I personally need to try this to see what my body does without any medication. And so far, so good. Thankfully, you know, really? I, I have minimal inflammation. Um, I, I can't really skate all the time. There's it's basically I can only put my blades on when I have a good day, when I like feel really good. And then even when I feel really good, you're not going to see me like even grinding stuff because it still hurts my ankles a bit to to force them, you know, flex them that much. Um, so with that said, um, I hit a big brick wall in 2014. I was like, oh, shit, Eric, you you knew nothing but skating since like 93. And it's 2013, 20 years later. And look, you can't skate anymore. And this is all you've known. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those, um, it's, a, it's definitely one of those things that punches you in the, in the head where it's like, either you figure something out or you just go in depression mode and just, you know, feel sad for yourself. Yeah. My parents didn't raise me that way, uh, especially my dad. My dad made sure to tell my brothers and I, as we were growing up, you better be strong-minded on everything. And that was one of the things that kind of kept running through my mind when I would kind of get into a dark place thinking about this, especially when I would go to sessions still uh, and not skate watching all my friends skate. And it was, it was, it was pretty depressing, man. Like I hate to even use that word, but just to yeah. watch it and see it. And you know, the comrade, the, the energy level is all the same, but I just can't physically be out there skating. Yeah. Yeah. So something kind of clicked in my head as like the cliche light bulb over my head, you know, and I'm watching my friends skate one day and I'm just like, damn, man, like nobody shoots photos out here, <laughs> you know, and even video wise, nobody's really even doing that much video. So for t I already tried video back in like 06, 07. I remember I bought like a, v a Sony VX 1000 or VX 2000 and uh, I tried filming. We made JSF video back in like 07. Uh, Viva La JSF. And uh, I found out pretty quick after the video that the video is just not for me. I, I'm not that kind of guy. I don't like it, it, the post work is pretty crazy. So I basically just chose to try photography. Uh, and I ended up borrowing one of my buddy Peter D's camera at first is like Canon Rebel T3, TI3 or whatever it was. And I started shooting and I I fell in love with it. And, and the cool thing about it was, is that back in 11th grade, when I was a sophomore in high school, I took photography class. I took a film photography class. So I learned how to develop film in a dark room, you know, take it out of the canister, all blind and whatnot. And Proper I photography before digital. And, yeah. And, and I did, I loved it. So, but, so I, I had that in the back of my head, I had a little bit of experience of, you know, what photos, uh, you know, how to take, how to, how to do photography. The one thing that really drove me was, is that I knew that I, I knew what good skating looks like, especially angles, you know, you're doing this kind of grind. It doesn't look good if you shoot it this angle. It looks better at this angle, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. surprising, you know, the funny thing is Jared Majors is the one that taught, taught me that because when he would film all the time and he wanted to get a trick, that was like one of the first things he would say. He would go, hey man, I need you to film me do this but don't film it this way, film it over here. Cause it looks mm -hmm. bad when you film it this way. Mm -hmm. So that's always been stuck in my head too, you know, just to yeah. look for the best angle, the, just the way to showcase it so that hopefully everybody that sees it is completely juiced on it. Yeah. You know? Totally. And like, you, you get that even in like your own skating, like you want your trick to look as best as it can yeah. be. So your mind's always there from gotcha. both sides. And it gets worse and worse as we get older. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like don't mess that up. <laughs> If you mess it up, you're pissed. <laughs> I got one shot now. <laughs> I didn't know you started photography specifically for skating. That's awesome to hear. And you, for someone who just, I guess, somewhat recently started photography, from one photographer to another, your work is amazing, man. And right. I'm so happy to see that you're doing that and you're like succeeding and thriving in that. And 
you have a bunch of pictures behind you. Obviously, if you're listening on, you know, iTunes, whatever, you're not gonna be able to see him. Um, what's like some of your favorite photos you ever taken or any of them behind you or no? Uh, yeah, definitely. That's why I have them on the wall. Uh, let's see here. It's all weird. <laughs> Switch. <laughs> this one right here is be free, but Yvonne took that one. And the only reason why I put it up is because I love having photos of my friends that they took as well. I don't want just only my stuff, ah, sick. but I, I got gotta- all the lighting and everything. All you had to do is just take the camera and hit the shutter. <laughs> Austin's done that for me many times. Uh, I was going to say I was on the, I was on tour with Yvonne and B Smith when Yvonne was trying to pick mine and his brain on like photography and he would do the same thing set up the lights and Yvonne would take snap the photo and same thing. Yeah. But go continue continue. Uh, yeah. Um, the other one that's great too is obviously the one right above it is the three amigos right here. I love, I love that, that one. one. Yeah. We got Victor, we got uh, Brandon Smith and we got Yvonne Nares and that's Antioch Skate Park. They're all backsliding the rail at the same time. And a lot of people were at first were like, damn, that's Photoshop. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> that's so sick. If that's that's my favorite photo of yours. <laughs> that's my favorite photo of yours, I think. Right on, man. Thank you. I love that one. Um, this the, the one right here is of Gene. This is Gene. This is one of my like first photos that I uh, printed out, basically. And it's him doing a, oh, man, I'm going to get killed for this, dude. What is it, a back sav or a savannah, whatever you want to call it? Yeah. yeah. Doing it at Deer Valley High School on the amphitheater rail, the craziest rail that you can do there, the one that Yvonne Nara is fast slid in. Like, yeah. Videos. Uh, and then I got one right here of Cameron. This was in a, a One magazine. And yeah, I remember that. Bunkers in San Francisco by the Golden Gate Bridge. You just and wrote JSF on that just because? I just, you know, just got to, <laughs> time, you just got to write it in there. Yeah. Uh, this is artwork right here. It says JSF from Dustin Dixon. I've been putting on, I've had on my wall for like 10 plus years. He's a great Shout artist. out Dirt. For real, you just hung out with him the other day. Shout <laughs> out Dirt. <laughs> and I am going to show this one. I'm th- I don't think Taylor and Cameron are going to be too pleased, but let me show you guys this one because that's why I have it here. Never, 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 never been seen yet. Ooh, so, exclusive. So oh. this right here is the Golden Gate Bridge. During COVID season in April. That's the that's that's photo. photo. Oh, wait, no who's cars, in there? No cars on the freeway. Oh, that's a photo? But we got Cameron. Woo! And we got Canadian Dave pulling him on his motorcycle. That is one of the illest photos ever. That's so sick. So you guys are going to see That this. is so fire. You shot that? Yeah, I shot this. Uh, it took us about three weekends to get this one done. I think, did you post the behind the scenes on your Instagram about that or something? Cause I remember you posted pictures like that, like through your camera. And I don't know if it was that specifically, but it was empty. So I'm yeah. guessing it was that. Uh, it was one of those, it was just one of those times, man. That you, we just had to take advantage of it. It was just, just, of course. And to get, you know, we can maybe get into this in a little bit too, but that's, we did a lot of skating during the first couple of months of, of, of the COVID thing because the streets were empty and it was just mm-hmm. a whole place paradise you know <laughs> yeah that was the best same thing in new york too i'm sure everywhere actually just being able to skate everywhere non-stop um before we jump off topic real quick i want to know you do you are you selling these photos still if just in case you yeah, want to buy yeah, them support? I, photos, I, I still i'm still using the dark room website okay. um i haven't been promoting too much i've noticed and it's kind of a no-brainer you don't promote people don't buy yeah <laughs> so it's just one of those things too um i'll be straightforward with everybody out there i how could I say this without sounding like a jerk? Sound like a jerk. I don't, I don't like making money off of rollerblading. I don't like making money off of something that I love. If it's something that I make money from, it, it's going to be something that I want to put back into skating. It's not going to be something that's going to go in my pockets or, you know, it's going to feed me or pay my, my bills and whatnot. That's why I have a job. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's, I'm very, I'm very weird with it, man. I just, something about, trying to get people to give me their money for something that has to do with blading kind of just doesn't sit with me the right way. <laughs> I well, hear you. I hear you on that, but let me interject for a second. I hear you on that, but okay. For example, like that, that photo of uh, Cam and Canadian Dave that you shot, like, I'm just like, damn, how can I, how can I have that in my freaking living room? That's nice. Yes, exactly. And like, I would be someone who would be happy to pay for it knowing that especially I'd like to give you the money no matter what you do with it because you've earned it from a lifetime of skating and I think you deserve something for your efforts regardless. But if you're if you wanted to be like, hey, I don't want to make money from it, 
boom, an extra meatloaf at the Filthy Fiesta, another bacon wrap meatloaf, mm-hmm. man. Like threw two two more bacon wrap uh, wrap meatloafs on the grill, mm-hmm. and that's it because. It's just a, even more of a way for you to uh, re- reinvest or continue to to feed that that passion, you know. So mm-hmm. I, I I would argue against that. I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> I just had to make it clear, man, because it's totally because that's the one thing is that I'm not I'm also I'm not we're actually all self promoters if you think about it. Like bladers, they're self taught, they're self coached, and they're self promoters, especially in this day and age, right? Especially mm-hmm. with the technology that we have. And I definitely have the uh, tools to, to be able to promote and do all of that. I just haven't really, maybe I haven't come up with a, a way that I feel very comfortable and confident putting myself out there. You know, doing the photo thing itself and selling it was kind of a stretch for me putting myself out there because um, I knew that people would want to buy skate photos, but at the same time, uh, I, I also don't want to change anything in my brain on why I do this because maybe I'm making some kind of income off of it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So that's why I just kind of. You want your motivations to stay pure. I just, yeah, exactly, man. I turn the switch mm-hmm. off in my brain and just, and I, I, I turn on the pure switch and I basically say to myself, yeah, just anything that comes in, it's just going to get right that put into, into blading, you know, which, which mm-hmm. in whatever form that may be, but it definitely gets put into blading at some point. I would like to say that I definitely respect that and everything you said about that, but I would definitely like to say that there should be a place in blading for high quality photos since there isn't really any or many print blade magazines out there or used for blade photos like this. You're not, you know, there's not a a daily break coming out every month like there used to be. So if photographers want to do this and sell blade photos, kind of like Billy said, like he wants that photo on his wall, like that is a great way for photographers, blade photographers to make, make a little money sure but able to you know get some joy and use out of these photos because there's no point in doing all this and i mean not to say there's no point but to do all this and just have it on instagram live for like a day or two and get a few likes and that's it you know but to have it hung on the wall nice piece of artwork you get to show off bleeding to like your friends and family whatever that's a beautiful thing and send me the darkroom links i'm gonna put it in the description in case anybody wants to buy and support you for what you're doing because what you are doing is amazing for you to be involved, even though you can't skate that much in any way. I mean, we want to keep you around. So if this helps you in any way, just the love and support that you get from people knowing that they want to buy your photos is, you know, is good enough. So thank 100%. you. Well, I'm not going to go anywhere no matter what, even if I don't get any money from blading. So you don't got to worry about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's but the, the bottom line is I need that thing in my living room or and, and maybe two of those things. That's I feel so, you, man. I feel you. So, so we're going to have to I'll figure wait. something out after this. That print probably won't be released, though, until next year. And the reason why I say next year is because um, if you guys, if, if people have been following Blading Cup, Blading Cup has been uh, postponed. Mm-hmm. Um, and Blading Cup was going to be our platform for the next skate video that we've been working on out here to um, to have a booth. And I'm also making a photo book uh, for the video. So we were going to sell it at Blading Cup. So that's why it's not going to get put on Darkroom. You're, it's going to be in the book as well, but then you'll you'll be able to buy the print by itself off Darkroom as well. Uh, so you're waiting for a Blading Cup 2021 to do that then? You think it's going to happen? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I definitely hope so, but I hope so too, man. That's it seems so far away, you know? No, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it like the, with the COVID and all that stuff. I'm keeping like the alcoholic model, man. One day at a time. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just not even thinking into the future. I'm just today and move forward. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of you not wanting to take money from blading. Um, we do have super chats going on in the live chat right now. So right. for anybody who does want to donate half the money goes to our guests. And we didn't ask you before what you wanted to do with the money, um, but that's completely up to you. If you want to keep it, you want to put it towards, you know, whatever, it's completely up to you. But meat just want to, yeah, meatloafs. <laughs> um, we just want to let you know that even though you don't want money from blading, there's currently money <laughs> from blading going towards you. So I'll let you guys know. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Okay. Well, um, cool. In a second, we're going to open it up for some questions. We have a few questions, uh, if you don't mind, uh, continuing to join us. We got some people in the uh, in the live chat that have some questions, but before that, I would like to remind you guys to please, as always, follow us on our platforms, all of them, um, Facebook, YouTube. Oh, I'm sorry. Do it in your New York accent. Oh, do it in the New York accent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey guys, how you doing? Okay, so we got a Facebook. You go to our Facebook, give us a like. Uh, we'd really appreciate that if you did that. Go to our YouTube, you know, you hit the subscribe and hit the notification button. After that, when you're done with that, you figure that out. You go to our, you know, Instagram, you give us a follow. You go on our iTunes, give us a five-star rating. Uh, you give us a little comment, a little review. We really appreciate that. You know, do us a favor. We may do you one in the future, something like that. And we also got a Patreon, you know. These, uh, these pizzas and these uh, fried calamads ain't going to pay for themselves. So please, if you don't mind, uh, a couple bucks on the Patreon would appreciate. And we would be able to do, uh, yeah, we'd be able to, no, whatever. Uh, if you want to support us on these things, sorry about that. I did my best. That was that, that was awesome. <laughs> Who knows who's gonna understand that? But that was still. I don't know. We really got good. the we got the one in English at the beginning of the show, so we'll go. We the, that one one. In, the one in regular English, the but also. English. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't shout out our new Patreon supporters at the top of the show, so let me do that now. Also, while the questions come in, if you guys got any, um, shout out to this month's supporters: Jacob Hayes, Chris Deister, Luke Dayton. Mike Olson, Andrew Parker, James Richter, and Sean Michelson. Thank you all so much for your support on our Patreon page. Um, I also want to just give a reminder again about our Bladies contest, our Bladies giveaway that we have going on. So like we said at the top of the show, we are having a, a collaboration with USD Skates and Bladies to give away two USD. That's right. You've heard it. Two, two. USD Bladies Aeon Skates along with a Bladies and a Jump Street Swag Package. So... If you're familiar with our 10K giveaway that we did a few weeks ago, um, just post a clip of yourself referencing your favorite Bladies clip. Again, this is for Bladies only to get the Bladies involved. And um, I just threw some examples up on the screen now just of Bladies clips going on. If you want to do a Coco Sanchez clip, uh, Angie Walton clip, Fabiola clip, Kaya Tursky, any one of your favorite Bladies, uh, a clip yourself referencing one of their clips. And uh, the criteria is for you to post it on Instagram tag usd skates blade ladies and jump street podcast um use hashtag bladies giveaway tag a fellow blady in your caption and uh the deadline is november 2nd so you have two full weekends to get your entries in oh and for the winners um first one is going to be one of mine billy's and megan peterson's choosing of our personal favorite one and then the other one is completely random so it doesn't matter your skill level no matter what you do, front side on the curb, double backflip, you're all qualified to win a pair of these USD Blady skates. Big shout outs again to USD for donating these skates for this, you know, great cause. It's gonna yes. be it's gonna be really hard to try to match a Fabiola trick. I'm just saying. If somebody wants to do it, that's like a, that's like an instant win. That's harder than Chris Edwards front flip over the car that won the last one. So if anyone wants to, there, do there, that, there's a few tough Blady follow follow ups, oh. but you know it's. Don't go out there and kill yourself. Correct. Just <laughs> backflip. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, let me, sorry. Before we go into the questions, I just want to give a shout out because Amaya and I can see all the super chats right here. I just want to go over the super chatters before we get into the other questions here. Um, shout out Jay Kays, who donated $5 just for Bill's mustache. So, Bill, congratulations on the mustache. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Aaron Schultz. Uh, he said, got to run for a bit. Please ask ESG who were his Cesslite influences and who are his current favorite Sessors. So you could answer that now, ESG, if you okay. want. Okay. Yeah. So who are my my slide influences my, and who are your current favorite sessors? Nice. So sessors. I like that term. Definitely influencers were like uh B Love Harden back in like VG, he does a couple of Cess slides. Mm -hmm. Eric Burke was another oh, yeah. one. Uh Matt Salerno actually used to do pretty cool Cess slides as well back in then. Um, and that's that's pretty much it in terms of influencing who's set sliding now that i'm like keeping an eye on and I, like i said earlier man everyone's doing it now so it's kind of hard to keep an eye but like uh bobby spazov he's really good at sesses uh, that's what i was like, thinking of he's, like controlled like no other mm. um it's tough man it's tough to throw out names because like i said everyone's doing it everyone's kind of has their own way of, of, of just integrating it into their skating now so yeah, I mean, let's just stick with Bobby for Bobby now. Bobby is a good one. Bobby's a good one. For He's sure. one I was thinking that came to my mind too when I thought of Seth Slides. Yeah, yeah. He was definitely the, one of the first dudes that I like kept an eye on like in the last few years to just see like how much he keeps stepping it up, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Very different and unique too. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a plus. Um, um, we, 
I, we got to shout out Joey Scanella yeah. for the super chat. Big Joey. Um, we also have a super chat from South Central Blade Club. And he said, uh, he also has a question for Eric. He says, uh, first of all, huge thank you for the shout out. No problem. Thank you for what you're doing for the community and the youth and rollerblading. That's what's important. And second, ESG, when you were doing that set slide down the hill, how were you able to hold that for so long? And was it first try? Also, you are the reason for me and my homie sketching cars in Santa Monica. Nice. That's what's up. <laughs> nice. Disclaimer though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the one in San Francisco I did down the block, that was like, I, I Google, Google maps did just from corner to corner. And it was like 328 feet. <laughs> it took did your like, research. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I just wanted to make sure I, how far it was, uh, yeah. how long it was, but um it took me like six or seven tries to do it. I actually did it like three times, but the one that we use obviously was the cleanest one. Uh, we got there. It's in San Francisco. It's in downtown. It's actually off of Broadway, um, right next to the strip clubs. <laughs> and, uh, we were there at seven in the morning on Labor Day. And uh, we waxed a whole lane, a whole lane of uh, a wax just to get some slippage going, some sliding. What kind of crew did you have? Yeah, you must that's had a few people. Crazy. I totally forgot, but Gab Drum was there. I totally forgot that he was there. You know, I know we no always way. have people from out of town. It's just there's been so many that I always forget specific sessions. You know what I mean? And he did mention something in a comment when that video came out or when you in, on Instagram the other day or the other month. And he's like, yeah, I was on the wax team. And I was like, <laughs> Sick. that's a lot of waxing. I didn't even consider to wax that whole spot, that whole street pretty much. Well, that is so it's like again, 40, 50 bucks in wax. <laughs> yeah. Just like the gap thing. It's like, I need to find an adrenaline rush. So it was like, no one says, no one's, no one's has sessled anything long like that. And if they have, it wasn't as long as what I wanted to do, but it wasn't pavement. I, yeah. And at the same time, I wasn't like kind of dumb. I knew that I couldn't do it with just without wax. The, the cool thing is there's a whole nother hill, like almost just as steep, a whole block right above it. And I bombed that whole thing just to get the speed to set slide the whole street with the wax. So imagine if I didn't have wax, I wouldn't even be able to go probably halfway. So it was Sean Salazar, Gab Drum, uh, Matt Bulger, Yvonne, Vinny, uh, I think Victor was there and we just waxed the street up until it was waxed. I tested it out a bunch of times. And then I just, then I started giving it a go from bombing it from the top of the hill, the block up and yeah. Do you know what the visual I have? Like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to share the visual I have with you guys. Cause you said 328 feet. I'm just envisioning someone doing that across a football field on grass for some reason. Yeah, I mean, that's because what it was. that's what it was. Yeah. You just did it on a football field. That's nuts. That's insane to think that. Yeah. Okay end zone not the beginning of the end zone yeah <laughs> yeah that's, that's, like, that's like 15 more feet <laughs> still yeah huge yeah. you should you should be in the guinness records for the longest that's life if so there is we, a oh should so, we contact we should contact guinness i won't take money just like i won't take money from rollerblading i i uh I won't put myself out there for somebody to come for Guinness. Someone needs to sign me up. So sign. You, you, you don't do anything. You don't want any recognition for anything ever. You're I've crazy. Good when someone else gives you the recognition instead of you putting it on yourself. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that 100%. So Very hey, humble. We, got, we got 109 people listening live right now. If anyone wants to nominate ESG for the longest test like Guinness Book of World Records, get Bladen on the map in another way, 328 feet, call He's, up Guinness. You have to do it again. <laughs> you have to do it again, though. That's all right. It's all right. Uh, oh, I, just, I just gotta. I'll probably just take a little bit of a, a Advil because Advil will help the the inflammation if it has some turmeric. A little turmeric. A little yeah. bit of hip bomb, maybe a little bit of hip bomb. Oh yeah. Co Code Jump Street at checkout. Code Jump Street. Forget about Code. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alex Hogan says, "What up, Eric? What do you think was the craziest trick ever done in the Bay Area?" Ooh, craziest trick. First of all, what's up, Alex? What up, Hogie? What up, a Hogan? long time. Hogan is actually one of the dudes that I randomly gave a pair of my k2s after paradigm tour in 2001 we were out in boston that was wow. a last stop and i remember it was a crew of obviously the boston guys that were coming out to skate with us and i didn't want you know i just i had new skates so i had my other skates that i was riding up during the tour and i remember giving it to him so yeah so he's that's how that's how alex and i know each other <laughs> damn so that's uh history so the craziest trick that's happened in the bay area yes okay wow you guys are putting my you're putting my mind on blast right now. 
It's probably a lot of options. There's too many options. Um, hmm. The craziest thing. I would probably say Pat Lennon have to have at least <laughs> he has three out of five. He has almost all of them for yeah, sure. Yeah, at least for three sure. out of five, man. Oof. If the craziest, I'm thinking hammers, you know, I'm yeah. not thinking really technical. So, yeah, it would be someone like a Pat Lennon. Um, I know Shima has done too many things in fact. You know, uh, B- BJ done some crazy shit too. BJ done so many things. You see what happens? You start naming one person. Yeah, yeah. it's a slippery slope in the bay. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, that's why like I said asking earlier, that. Yeah, I thought I said earlier. You know, the talent is just—it's too good out here, man. That's why my photography is so easy to 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 accomplish, man. Because all I so got many is subjects. Just, yeah, man. They just—they do it themselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got a few more questions here and then, uh, yeah, I've got a few more questions here if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Go for uh, it. Stephen Babcock says, shout out JSF. Yay. Shout out Stephen Babcock. What's, uh, your fastest sketch ever and who drove the car? <laughs> I knew I had a feeling one of the homies was going to put that out there because it's, it's not known to see you talking about being humble, man. This is where I did something last year um that nobody knows about except my friends and it didn't come out because of liability issues uh so long story short i went and i did a video with braille house and if you guys know who braille house is i know b free touched on it and you guys touched on it in his last podcast yeah uh, braille houses are very very well known uh skateboard uh, youtube channel basically mm-hmm. and we've been able you know i'm very good friends actually with with them as well I told them that I wanted to get a video of me sketching on a car on the freeway. And they're like, that's insane. So I showed them my videos and they're like, we're doing it. Like, All right. So let's come up with something. Let's figure yeah. something out instead of just me only being on the freeway. Cause I've already done it. So they're all about, you know, uh, what do you call it? Viral type videos. Or yeah. Videos that they want to get more and more. The most views. Through. Yeah. Like, eight clicking, even the, the title sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I was like, you know what? They're always talking about the world's amazing rollerbladers, the world's greatest rollerbladers. What about the world's fastest rollerblader? So I was like, okay, let's do that. Let's go somewhere and let's sketch and let's see how fast I can go. My goal was 120 miles an hour. What? Wow. Yeah, I didn't hit 120. What do you think I hit? 70? 115. No. What car were you in that you were going to go at 120? A Mercedes Benz what what kind of what kind of we need skates location where was yeah we did a lot of shit. a glasses. lot of shit. where was where was guinness for this too i'm telling you man you're talking about humble dude i just you know again i just I this guy humbly know. owns like three guinness oh. records and not even saying anything <laughs> hello the? people we need to do something about this wake up <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you yeah go over these details <laughs> man yeah like billy said like who who is driving what were you what's going on explain so, this yeah uh so child Chal- Chal- wallet charles solano out here from the bay area uh he is the one that uh helped me out he was uh very 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 grateful to have him because uh this is the thing too about sketching, especially even like the Bay Bridge thing, any, any kind of sketching in general. When you're the driver, you take on that fear of, I don't want to kill my friend. <laughs> yeah. And I think this intensified like a hundred times more. And um, I actually never have sketched with Chalet before. You know, he, he, we've never, I've never hold, held on his car or anything like that. Not that I didn't trust him. I needed a fast car. I know, you know, he can drive his car. So I did a little bit of research. I started driving around. I'm like, what stretch can I do this on? Do we need to go out to a freeway again where it's, you know, smoother so I don't have to worry about things like that? So I got pretty lucky and I went to the uh, Oakland ports again and the Oakland port, they just repaved this whole stretch of road. And it was, it's like a good, I think it's like at least a mile and a half or like a mile. Yeah. So that was it. I was like, all right, (laughs) we found it, man. And um, yeah, we set up the date. We met up at the Braille House and uh, we drove from it's Braille House is in San Leandro. It's about 15 minutes south of Oakland. So we drove from there and I actually got out on out of the car on the freeway so we can get a clip of that as well before we got to the port to do the 150 mile an hour. So when we got to the port. uh, Yeah, it was just all we got to do is just gun it, get to the top speed and hopefully, you know, everything is okay. Don't fall. Did you? I mean, glasses, helmet. What? What was well, the gear? Glasses on this one either. <laughs> oh man. And any pads at all? 
No, no pads, man. Just what? No helmet. No, just a hooded sweater. True hashe. Tied it, tied it up tight. Had my hat on still front, just so it didn't like <laughs> flap up and fly off. What? So what happened was, is um, we tried it a couple of times. The first time we couldn't get that fast because there are a couple intersections with lights, but these are okay. It was on a weekend, so these are this is the port of Oakland. It's only busy on the weekdays. That's when all the trucks are coming in and out. Yeah. The containers. So it's completely dead, especially in the morning. We were there like seven in the morning. The what was happening is the car was slightly going up and down through the intersection. So after we would go through the intersection, like the last one, we're already hitting like 90 miles an hour. The car is kind of like, you know, it, it moves a bit on you, right? So Charlie was like, no, we only got to 90. I said, okay, well, you just, you, you got to punch it sooner so that we can get to a faster speed at the end. So on that, on that attempt, that next attempt. He punched it. We got to 115. So, he punched it, huh? <laughs> yeah. The crazy part to explain to you guys is, is that when I was at probably 100, I thought I was already at the max speed. We kept going faster. <laughs> and I'm holding on like, oh, shit. Like, it's not over yet. I mean, the road still, there was still plenty of space. But I just, yeah. something in my mind said. It just felt. But, but no, we had it. The car kept pulling more. I kid you not, man, my leg started lifting up on its own from the wind. Oh, shit. So my right leg, so imagine I'm holding onto the car and my left leg is towards the door, right? My right leg literally starts to push up from the wind from just so much. Yeah, pressure. yeah. And on top of that, oh, man, <laughs> this is what sucks about sketching on cars that you're you haven't sketched on a lot before, or it doesn't have a very, very good grip. His car, he has a grip, but it's not as good as like the, my car. Cause the ones in Volo 5, the ones that I've sketched in my sketch, ESG sketch in the Bay, it's been my own car. So, and I'm really used to that. Dude, my hand started kind of slipping. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. You know, and like I slightly, very slightly, but you know, higher powers above or whatever it may be. We hit the 115 and, and as soon as that started happening, he, you let go of the gas and you know everything kind of went back to normal <laughs> wow we stopped, we stopped right at the at the last light where you can't go anymore the the, the two guys that from braille that were and you and, and you use the car to stop right yeah for sure holding on oh, yeah. the car, you know and yeah i'm on the brakes it's a gradual stop yeah I mean, this word. is all the kind of stuff that you got to plan out right so you're for sure putting yourself in death in death mm -hmm. danger um but uh, they're in their own separate car falling right next to us, uh, filming the whole time. Be Free was in the back seat of, of our car with the fisheye filming from the back uh, window. And as soon as we stopped <laughs> and Chale was like, 115, I, I, I lost it, bro. I just, you know, even though I hit the 120, I was like, dude, that was- That's like, good. I almost died. Two, yeah, we're good. I went 115 and yeah. he got out the car. Everyone else got out the car. We're jumping up and down, giving each other. <laughs> yeah. And then right after that happened, I'm like, okay, let's get the fuck out of here before we get caught. <laughs> yeah. You know, we didn't want, you know, that's another thing too. It's like, thankfully I haven't, I haven't been caught doing this by the law. So it, was that was that the main liability with the footage never being put out was because yeah. it was highly illegal what you were doing? Yeah, basically the uh, the team over there at Braille were were they're basically yeah they're they're afraid that maybe some liability would come on their end and I would imagine they, they just didn't want to face anything like that. I personally I totally understand man like this is again these are these are things too that just me growing up and, and maturing. I, I try not to get bent out of shape over the littlest things. And even though this might not be little, like it's footage that I want people to see and whatnot, it's still something that I personally did. And I know I did it. That's all that matters to me. <laughs> wow. You, someone has to put that footage out or something, maybe not on their YouTube account, whatever, but like, you got to get a hold of that. Cause that is insane. That's legendary shit. That's something that's never been done before and might not ever be beaten. Definitely gone faster than anyone has gone on rollerblades or so skates I, or I skateboard at 120 i seen a dude do 120 and that's why i marked it at 120 i try to make up you saw a guy do 120 yeah he did it in a full leather get up my motorcycle le leather get up one of those helmets that have to like that's what i would imagine it. and he, he got dragged right he got dragged by the back of the like spoiler of a, of a car on a strip drag uh, like you know so yeah, yeah. again this is where then my ego comes in and I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to look like that when I do it. I don't yeah. want to, you know, there's, there's a 
there is, in my opinion, a better way to present something like this. Yeah, so. do it in shorts, bro. Shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well at that point if you fall if you fall doing a buck twenty, whether yeah. you have a shirt on or not, just, you're done. just do it. Do it shirtless in a pair of Kmart skates and in a bathing suit. Ah, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. For next time you do, we got to put some, make some rear spoilers on your skates to create some downforce of some sort because your feet were lifting. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where, again, another hindsight situation, man. I'm just like, all right, well, thank God I didn't die. <laughs> that's insane. I can't believe you did that. I'm so happy you're still alive. <laughs> that's great. I don't know how we're going to top that. How are we going to top that with the questions now? I don't know. I don't know. I that's sore. I was sore for like a week after that. What was sore? Like your arms from holding or like? Yes, my arms, my leg, my thighs. Just everything. You have to, you literally have to just flex the whole time. You know what I mean? You're, you're uh, every muscle to just stay completely still and, and just, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, like I can even like, you know, just like, I don't know, on my motorcycle, probably the fastest I got it to is like, I don't know, 95. And even then you're like, <laughs> like you're being yeah. like blown back so hard by the wind. Definitely. So I couldn't imagine um, just basically your soul body with wheels under it, like, you know, in a t-shirt. And your feet didn't uh, hurt from that? Like, no. like the rumbling? No, no. Remember, it was, it was brand, brand new paved road. With beat as 56 millimeter wheels. Uh, 80 millimeter flat. <laughs> okay. You smartened up this time. <laughs> smartened up for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The option was available this time, I guess. New, new day. All right. Um, well, I don't know. That was a pretty good one. Um, we got like, that'd be hard to top. <laughs> it's kind of hard to top. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that's probably a good place to end it actually. Cause I'm not, such I'm not mad at that. I'm not can mad I, at that at all. Can I mention one thing though, that I forgot to mention earlier? Absolutely. No, we we're going to, I was going to ask you, uh, any parting things, but please bring it up. Yeah, for sure. I just wanted to make sure everyone out there knows that we've been working on another skate video out here in NorCal. And uh, if you guys seen Hit It Wet, if you guys seen Hit It Wet last year, made by Taylor Cobrin, um, we're making another one. It's called Hit It Wet Again. Uh, we've been filming <laughs> nice all name. year. Uh, the the homies out here, man, are just ripping it. Like the, the level of skating is is beyond what I ever would have imagined. Uh, these guys are doing San Francisco house skating you know, street spots where it's just, they're taking it to another level, you know what I mean? And I just want to make sure everyone is aware out there that it's going to come out as soon as, um, I, you know, Taylor will, will make sure that he announces when that thing's coming out. But I want you guys to make sure you guys keep your eyes peeled because this video is going to be insane. And on top of it, like I said earlier, we're going to come out with a photo book that goes along with it. So you see all the cool photos that go along with it, some of the tricks. I like that. That's cool. They have the two pieces, both sides of the, the story and everything. I hit it wet. The first one was amazing. We, they premiered it at Blading Cup last year, right? And I remember being so hyped after watching that too. I loved everything about it. It was such a raw video. Like it reminds like it was sk street skating in like purest form, like the filming, the music, the style of everyone skating. Everyone's section was crazy. They killed it. I can't wait for the next one. I can only imagine how good it's going to be. Absolutely. Yeah, man. I've like I said, once again, the, the, the skating level is just so far out there that it's gonna definitely make you think about how to skate street differently <laughs> Ooh, damn that's interesting to hear yes that's awesome sick shout um, out it went again all the crew jsf all them homies yeah keep an eye out <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah um any other other than the shout out any other parting words for the community last words things to say i mean i i feel like we're gonna have you on again but i also felt like we we're gonna have you on a long time ago yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys. You know, I, uh, again, thank you so much for having me you guys on your guys' uh, uh, podcast and platform. Um, thank you. I know my popularity level is going to go up now that <laughs> now this is done. Us You're, too. Rank You're ranking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just want other uh, everyone out there to know too, man, just keep skating for the love of it first and foremost, because that's what's most important. If you skate for the love of it, everything else will follow positive. If you skate, not for the love of it. Uh, you might run into some uh, roadblocks down the road. So take it from me. Don't do it. Do it for the love of it. And always make sure that you have fun or else you ain't having fun. <laughs> Wise words from someone with 27 years in the game. There you go. Hell yeah. ESG, thank you so much, brother. Uh, thank what you for everything that you do. And thank you for sticking around and still putting out uh, tons of great content and everything that we love to see. So thank you, brother. 
Hell yeah, definitely appreciate you in our industry. I'm going to link the, uh, if anyone wants to buy any of your prints, I'm going to link that down below. And yeah, we look forward to seeing more of what you show us. Perfect, man. Thank you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Everyone, oh, yeah. thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.